Hey guys, Yankee Prepper, and today I'm going to do a video about making your own bivy bags out of Tyvek for your sleeping bags. But first, I want to talk a little bit uh, about sleeping bags, specifically uh, the one that I showed in my video when I took the kids uh, winter camping. I got a lot of inquiries about that, a few questions, and uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to answer every detailed question, but I'm going to give you an overall view and why I prefer. Uh, this sleeping bag for for cold weather uh, duty. This one that I'm going to use to compare it against is the uh, newer the newer uh, sleeping bag, the modular system that the military replaced this one with. This one I believe ran from the 1970s uh, to the early 2000s, and then this one took over. and the, And the very new one comes in uh, ACU camel instead of the woodland. But this is the identical bag that they're using today for for cold weather and it's a modular system and I just want to go over a few points uh, they're both very good bags but if when I'm going out for cold weather I always take the old school one because it's superior in, in a few ways that I'll point out and hopefully answer a few of the uh, questions and, and uh, inquiries that I received okay first off the old school one is a lot cheaper you can probably pick a good new one up on eBay for a little bit less than a hundred bucks uh, or even at a surplus center. You can pick up, if you're really on a tight budget, you can get a used one in good shape, maybe for around 70. These, brand new, are going to cost you about 300 bucks. Uh, you can probably pick one up used for around 150, maybe 170 bucks. These come in different sizes. These come in one size fits all, which you know is a damn lie. Uh, this one, for instance, I was able to get in 46 inch. They go by chest size and it's long. So I got a 46 inch long, which gives me you know, enough room for my manly girth. And this one comes in like condom size. You know, you feel like you're just a wrapped dick in it because it's so tight. Unless you're some small puny guy that likes 5.56 millimeter or something. Now another big difference is weight. <clears throat> This one weighs 10 pounds. In fact, I weighed it. It almost weighs exactly 10 pounds. This one weighs approximately 12 pounds. And that's a lot of weight. If you've ever done any long distance hiking, um, 2 pounds is a lot of weight. When you're doing long distance hiking or backpacking, you've got to count ounces, not pounds. Now, the advantage to this one is that it compresses better. This one, this one is filled with all polyester and nylon. This one is filled with down, real goose down, and so it doesn't compress as well. However, volume usually, or space-wise volume, usually does not bother me. I place this on the back of my ruck or whatever I happen to be using. I don't care. You know, I don't have to compress it down. That's not an issue when I'm long-distance backpacking or canoeing or kayaking for that matter. Uh, and, and it isn't that big of an issue. Uh, but that's where I feel like this is an advantage because compression, although that sounds good that you can get it into a smaller space, when you lay down on this, it, your body also compresses this and it gives you uh, less cushion when you're sleeping, which leads to less comfort. This one is a very, very, I feel like hands down this is a much more comfortable sleeping bag and it makes a big difference how you sleep when you're out there. Now one of the biggest advantages and one of the most important to me in this old school one is this one you can use to dry out your wet clothing. This one you cannot. Uh, a good trick if you don't know, like I did in, in the uh, video I did when I was camping like, with my kids, if you you know fall into a, a creek like I did, you can take your wet clothing and put it in the bottom of your sleeping bag and dry it out overnight. This breathes well enough that it will evaporate the uh, wet clothing through the night using your body heat and it will dissipate through the bag itself just like I did in the video. You cannot do that with this new modular one. It's got enough Gore-Tex in it that it doesn't breathe that well. In fact, they, you know, it's an advantage to it that it's completely waterproof. However, if you have wet clothing and you take them off and put it inside your sleeping bag, you're just going to make the inside of your sleeping bag wet and it's harder than hell to uh, dry that out again. You can't do that with these. That's that's a huge difference, especially uh, where it means so much in a cold environment or if you're winter camping. <clears throat> now, overall, they're both very good sleeping bags. They're both made by the same company, actually. They must have that uh, 
that contract locked up. Tanier makes both of them. I think Wiggly's has a, a, a modular sleeping bag that's very popular like this. But overall, I would take this one over this one. And, I, and overall, this is the one I grab when I'm going in any kind of cold weather. It doesn't have to be extreme cold weather because I would rather have a really warm sleeping bag uh, than one that's not going to be good enough. Although this one is rated to 30 below and this one's rated to 50 below. But don't believe everything you read because they're rated differently. This one is rated for 50 below for an entire night's sleep around 8 hours. Or, I'm sorry, 30 below for an entire night's sleep for 8 hours. This one is rated for 50. However, it's only rated for 50 for 4 hours. So they even rate them differently. I don't know who thinks all this crap up. I guarantee you it's someone that's never been in the field or doesn't use them very much. Now having said that, the difference in temperature ratings probably come from the fact that this one comes with, a, with its own bivy bag. And a bivy bag can... Definitely put on about uh, 10 degrees to your to your rating. It'll keep it warmer because it just keeps out the wind. And good thing today, ironically, I'm going to show you how to make your own homemade bivy bag uh, for these if you decide to get one or any bag that you're using. Now having said all that, they're both, again, very good bags. This one I would rather have if I'm going out in cold weather but this one is definitely more adaptable and that's what the military was thinking we're not really fighting wars in the you know in the northern forests of Europe anymore where it's cold uh, or in Korea for that matter you know a lot of the places that we're fighting right now just happen to be where there's sand and oil <clears throat> and these are modular which means you know you can break them down depending on what you need so you have a black bag in, in, inside for uh, intermediate and this is uh, light weather I think from I don't know you have to read the tag but it's like uh, 30 degrees and up, you know, real light, and then you got the bivy bag, and you can actually just sleep in the bivy bag too. So this one's definitely more adaptable, and that's what the military is looking for. One size fits all, cram everybody in there, and then, you know, whatever you need so they don't have to hand out, you know, three or four different bags uh, to each soldier. They just have one bag they can give out and say, here you go, take care of it. But if you're going to do specialized, and, I, and I'm really into buying specialized gear, for the environments because there is no one size fits all for every situation. You need specialized gear if you're going to do specialized activities. And again coming full circle with this conversation, uh, the, this is really the foundation of my prepping mentality. You know if all else fails I can, I can keep my family warm and safe and, and that's where my prepping mindset started was you know, on that outdoor adventures, uh, being able to survive and keep warm and thrive out there. And eventually that just grew into, you know, my everyday lifestyle, including my house and, and uh, you know, how I operate in general. So if you have any more, I guess, specific questions, you know, I'll try to answer them for you. But that was my rundown on the two sleeping bags, the uh, newer military modular style and the old school. Uh, I prefer the old school uh, for those reasons that I just showed you. Anyway, let me get to the, uh, the beef of this uh, video. I probably spent too, too much uh, time on that. But uh, I want to show you Tyvek, man. It, it is the magic material uh, if you like the outdoors. Okay, Tyvek. Tyvek is a, at least a very distant cousin to Gore-Tex, but it has a lot more advantages. One of them being it's, it's uh, uh, much more durable. Uh, Gore-Tex is a great material, uh, but it is expensive, and you need some kind of uh, lamination to toughen it up because it's, it's a very weak material. Tyvek is just the opposite. It's uh, still a great vapor barrier. You can actually make an emergency bag out of this that'll, that'll carry water. Uh, it's breathable, just like Gore-Tex, but it's much cheaper and much more durable. I usually use uh, a bivy bag for all of my camping trips. I usually always have one in my pack anyway. The only time I ever really need a full-size tent when I'm backpacking or canoeing is because it's bug season and you want something that you know you can enclose yourself up on and keep yourself safe from the bugs but the other three seasons you know winter early spring and uh, late fall you don't really need a tent all I all I need or all I use uh, to go super lightweight is a bivy bag for my sleeping bag and a tarp you know the tarp keeps the rain off my area and it actually works a lot better in a tent because it gives you a, a bigger area uh, that you can keep dry and then a bivy bag keeps your uh, sleeping bag safe this is a military surplus bivy bag. It cost me $100 brand new. I've seen bivy bags at REI for close to $300.
And the bivy bag is important because it protects your sleeping bag. However, it takes the beating. And you know, to, to invest in something, even $100, let alone $300, that eventually is going to get burn holes or, or you know, some twig is going to poke through it, you know, it's just not going to last if you're using it. At least not as much as, you know, I've, I've gone through bivy bags before in a few seasons, good ones. So I have found that you can make a great bivy bag out of Tyvek, and that's what I'm going to show you here today. I've got a 9-foot roll by a 100-foot roll of Tyvek, brand new, never been used. Bought it off Craigslist for 50 bucks. If you want to pay full price, you can go to Home Depot and buy it for 150 I try never to pay full price. Craigslist is a great place to shop. You'll need some shears, a, double, uh, a roll of double-sided carpet tape. I've got outdoor carpet tape here, and some Velcro. Now, the Tyvek has a lot more uses than that, not only as a house wrap, or making a bivy bag for your uh, sleeping bag to protect your sleeping bag, but you can use it for a vapor barrier on the ground, a really lightweight one. It's much, uh, it's much lighter than a tarp and much cheaper. So you can use it for ground cover and you can even use it as a tarp if need be. Okay, take your Tyvek, roll it out, put your sleeping bag on it, and then we're going to take the roll and roll it over the sleeping bag and cut it off at that same edge. So basically just making a rough envelope for your sleeping bag. Got my sleeping bag inside, one about three or four inches at least on the outside, and I'll start cutting the envelope. Okay, so there's the rough cut. I even kind of cut some angles around to uh, follow the lines of the mummy style sleeping bag. It's better to be a little baggy than to be too tight. You want to be comfortable when you're sleeping. Uh, and if you make a mistake, so what? Tyvek a wonderful product, but this probably cost me 50 cents if I had to throw this away. So once you get the rough cut done, take your sleeping bag out and then we'll start to uh, trim it up and shape it up a little more. Now given, I don't think I'm going to have to do too much trimming. If, if I could show you the whole view of this, it actually turned out pretty good. But believe me, this is not my first time. The first few times it was uh, a lot rougher. Um, it doesn't really matter what side is on. I've heard people argue about this, that you, you have to have it with the Tyvek facing out in order for it to work properly. And as far as I can discern, and I have looked into this, that is absolutely false. Tyvek does not have a one-way direction. I have even went to uh, DuPont's website and even called up 1-800-444-TYVEC to talk to them about this, and it is false. They would rather you have Tyvek on the outside of your house because they want people to see that, but it has nothing to do with the breathability of the product itself. I just wanted to add that in there. Now, having said that, I'm going to turn the Tyvek over facing out because when I'm finished with this, I'm going to turn it inside out to hide the seams and make the seams look better. And uh, I just don't want the Tyvek on the outside. I'd rather have it just all white. But before I go any further, I'm going to put this in the wash. That's right. We're going to put it in the wash machine. Now Tyvek is basically high density polyethylene. And it's woven so tight that water can't pass through it, but vapor can. Uh, it's the same stuff your milk jugs are made out of, high-density polyethylene. It's a great product. It's a miracle product. But when it's crisp and new, it's noisier than hell, and you'd be up all night listening to that as you move around, plus all the noise. You'd scare all the animals away. So we're going to wash this, and it'll soften up a little bit, and you won't have all that crinkly noise. So there you go. Just put it on a short cycle. Don't put any soap in there because that can break uh, the adhesives down that hold it together. Cold, medium, normal, fast. Now once it comes out of the wash, you're going to notice right away it's a lot softer and quieter. And that's what we were looking for. And if you really want to soften it up some more, stick it in with some, some dry towels just for five minutes and let it tumble around in there. Not too much heat though. Remember, you don't want to use a lot of heat because you'll degrade the uh, adhesives in the uh, Tyvek. There. Now it's really soft and it's still waterproof and it still breathes. Look at that. Huge difference. It's like a piece of uh, like a piece of cloth. Okay, I've got it laid out so all i got to do now is start putting the tape on. Uh, once again, as a reminder, I've got the Tyvek lettering facing out because this is actually going to be the outside of my bivy bag when I'm done. I will be turning it inside out to, to make the seams look nice. The nice thing about carpet tape is that it's like painter's tape. It's uh, flexible where you can move it along the contours of, of whatever you're doing. 
And on the side itself, you only want to come up about halfway because you want an opening for the sleeping bag that you're going to place inside of here. So the rest of this we're going to do in Velcro so you can open and close it at will. For the top, you're going to want to leave maybe a 5-inch piece of tape. And that will provide a hood for your head and the, and the top of your sleeping bag. And then, of course, the top and the bottom, you only need to go halfway across because we're going to fold this over to make the bivvy in a minute. Okay, there it is. I've got it folded over. I've got the carpet tape applied. The carpet tape is plenty strong to hold this. You'll rip the Tyvek before you'll uh, tear it apart again, especially after a while when the adhesive set in. Uh, I've tried hot melt glue before thinking that would work, but that's not as pliable. And sewing it would uh, just cause other problems because you're making a hole in the Tyvek and you'd have leaky seams. This really, I have found, is the best way to do it. And if you really want to put a professional look to your corners, just stick one little square of uh, carpet tape on the corner and fold it over. And again, you'll have to really press down on that. But uh, when you turn that inside out, it'll make a nice, a nice looking corner. All the seams will look uh, really nice, actually. All right, I put the Velcro on the inside. I like to go all the way up the opening in case it's a really cold night. I can seal the bag up, but it's that easy. I now have a custom-built bivy bag that's 100% waterproof, windproof, but breathable. For about, well, let's just say less than 5 bucks, as compared to a $100 one that I'm, that I'm showing you on the side here. It has a couple other advantages, too, that I want to point out. Number one is weight. The homemade one is lighter and it does just as good a job. Let's see, uh, let's compare them weight wise. Alright, put the military one on first. Two pounds, 4.3 ounces. And we'll do the Tyvek. 10.3 ounces. Another advantage of this bivy is it increases the temperature rating of any sleeping bag that you put inside of it by about 10 degrees. So it improves the performance of your sleeping bag, especially on those cooler nights. But there's another advantage that I want to point out. You know, sleeping bags are usually a pretty good investment. You usually get what you pay for with them. And, uh, you know, a bivy bag, like I was pointing out before, can cost, if you buy one, $100. I've, like I said, I've seen it for 300 bucks. And the bivy bag, you know, they're not going to last me more than three seasons. It's hard to justify that kind of cost. I mean, you're, you're laying them on the ground. You've got embers flying up and burning through them. So sometimes when you buy something like this, you're so worried about the cost of it or the cost of replacement with it uh, that it takes away from your experience. Some of you will get that and some of you won't. But for, for those of you that do, I mean, that's the way I look at things. Sometimes when you take something really expensive into the field, you're, you're, you've are you're got to be so careful with it that it actually takes away uh, from what you're doing out there. Well, this bivy bag cost me five bucks, so I don't care if I burn it up on the first camping trip. You know, it's easy for me to make them, and it protects the most important investment to me, my sleeping bag, because the bivy bag takes the beating. That's what it's all about. And if you can make them for five bucks, it's not a bad deal. Anyway, just thought I'd share, guys. Try it out. It'll make a difference in, uh, in your outdoor experience, believe me.